Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vitali. Today I'll show you how I build this recuperator. I thought I'd put it together in a couple of evenings, but it took me several months. In this video I'll share my experience so you don't make the same mistakes. Quickly a recuperator ventilates room and helps safe on heating. It warms the incoming cold outdoor air using the outgoing warm air. Do you even need to ventilate? Some people don't open their windows at all the winter and they seem fine. At one point I bought a CO2 sensor and since then my life hasn't been the same. Without ventilation my CO2 was between 1200 and 1500 ppm. That's under the absolute maximum, but if you stay in a room like that all the day, by afternoon your attention is gone and you don't feel like doing anything. Now I try to keep CO2 under 800 ppm and I work much better and more productively. Of course, before doing it myself I looked at ready-made solutions. On the market I saw two types of design. The simplest is a heat exchanger made from tubes plus a fan that alternately blows warm air out, heating the tubes, then switches and blows cold air in, warming it from the warm tubes. The problem is that house isn't airtight. If noticeable amount of air is being pushed out, fresh air will be sucked in through various gaps instead of waiting for the recuperator to switch to intake. There are also full industrial heat recovery recuperators for ventilation systems where intake and exhaust go through separate channels, but they are expensive and bulky, you can't fit those into a window. So I decided to quickly build my own recuperator out of what I had on hand. It didn't turn out quickly, I ran out of materials and not everything worked the way I planned, but at least I gained a lot of useful experience that I want to share. So you don't forget later, hit like now. If the video disappoints you, you can always take it back. Assembly. The core is the heat exchanger. Aluminium tubes work really well for this and they are easy to find in most hardware or building supply stores. I used tubes 12 mm in diameter with a 1 mm wall thickness. You need a lot of tubes and it's important to find a shop where they are cheap. Prices can vary by almost 3 times. I bought 1 meter tubes and cut them in half. One more side quest, I had to remove the labels from the tubes. I didn't know what kind of glue that was, but neither alcohol nor acetone would take it off. You also need a housing. I decided to put everything inside a plastic ventilation duct. This is what the recuperator will be made from. I decided to make the tube holders from expanded polystyrene and seal them with silicone. But spoiler, that was a very bad idea. Polystyrene isn't suitable and silicon isn't suitable either. I'll explain it later. The incoming and outgoing air must not mix, so in one direction the air runs inside the tubes and in the other direction it runs along the outside of the tubes. Heat passes through the tube walls from the warm air to the cold air. Almost ready. This is what the heat exchanger will look like. Final touch, we connect the temperature sensor to measure inlet and outlet temperatures. But since the sensor is attached to the heat exchanger itself, it measures the heat exchanger's temperature, not the air. They will differ. Silicon the joints almost done, and here's the problem, the silicon doesn't hold. It won't stick to the polystyrene or to the duct, which is made of PVC. That was a bad idea. What to do? Order a lazy cut plywood, 
There is a better solution. I wanted one for a long time, but never had the right moment. Then my birthday came up, so I bought myself a 3D printer. We'll print tube mounts on the printer. That's way more practical than poking holes in polystyrene with a drill. So the mounts are ready, inserting the tubes. All those side holes are not about saving plastic, they they are there so sealant can squeeze out and evenly fill the gap between the mount and the duct. Uh, remembering that silicon wouldn't stick to the duct walls, I used a special sealant called Fix All. It's supposed to. I also sent the inside of the duct for better adhesion, pouring the sealant. And again, the things didn't go as I planned. The sealant was too thick and wouldn't spread. It didn't fill the space around the tubes. I had to pull the mount out and do the sealing in two steps. First fill the mount, then put it into duct. I'm still not sure that the sealant actually flowed into the gap around the tubes. So I pulled more sealant over the tubes from the top. I put the tubes into the duct and sealed the seams. There is a special PVC tape for duct joints. They didn't have the white tape, so it wouldn't look great. Installing the fan. On one side I have an adapter to a round pipe. On the other side I thought it would be easy to just cut a hole in the duct itself. Spoiler, it wasn't easy. I should have used an adapter to round pipe. Especially since I have 3D printer that I can make any adapter. Screwing the fan. To make it look nice I bought these vent covers. The fan fits inside. A fan with a round flange fits almost perfectly. The recuperator is nearly ready. Now it has to be installed in the window. The polystyrene I originally bought for mounting the tubes came in handy. For the window I should have used thicker polystyrene. It wouldn't have needed so many layers. Installing vent covers on the outside too. The 3D printer came in handy again to make an adapter. Strangely, uh, the pipe didn't seal tightly with the store bolt adapter. And one more printed ring to close the gap in the polystyrene. Both for looks and to stop drafts. I decided to put both fans on the inside so they wouldn't get rained on. One is inside the vent cover housing, for the second I needed something that looks good. I printed this adapter for a round vent cover. I also have PVM controllers to control motor speeds. I printed this case with a mount for room side air temperature sensor. I decided to fit 12 volts to the unit and Keep the power supply external. That way the recuperator can be powered from a battery if that's ever needed. It works! Installation it in the window. First test. The exchanging temperature at the inlet is 8 degrees and at the outlet is 16. Next test. I waited for it to get colder outside to test again. Right now only the intake fan is running. I want to check the mode without heat recovery. I tried blocking the duct with a plastic bag. It helped. Outside it's about minus 3 degrees Celsius, at the outer end of the tubes it's minus 1, at the inner end it's about plus 3. 
Now we will check the recovery mode. Turning on the exhaust fan, the incoming air warms up. From the outside it looks like this. In sub-zero temperatures condensation forms. I really hope there is none inside. So the project took an insane amount of time and effort, but I gained a valuable experience. The design isn't perfect, it has flaws. In the future I want to refine it or maybe rebuild it completely. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the future videos. Bye everyone!